What's up, Canes fans? Welcome to the Canes Insight Daily Podcast, powered by Anajar and Levine, Accident Attorneys. The recruiting news is on fire right now. We will give you the bank, the absolute latest in Miami recruiting, straight from the most direct sources that you could possibly get. A lot of commitments to talk about, a lot of near commitments to talk about, just a lot of recruiting juice right now, and we'll get into all of it. First one, a shout out. Anajar and Levine accident attorneys. If you or someone you care about has been injured in an accident, you could be entitled to significant compensation. Dial 1-800-747-FREE, 1-800-747-3733. Take back control of your life. They don't get paid until you get beat. Paid. Beat. Paid. Beat. Beat. Get in here. I like getting paid. (laughs) Hey, listen, there's some recruits getting paid right now because Miami is on an absolute tear of recruiting. So, I'm going to go through the bank. The bank is those of you who subscribe to Kane's Insight. First of all, like and subscribe to this podcast if you don't already. Sign up for the Kane'sInsight.com free, and you get the absolute latest uh, 6.9 million posts and counting biggest fan community on the planet. But, you know, if you're there, you've been part of it, you know the bank is where I give you the most direct recruiting information possible. Try to give you names months before they gain steam. I think we've done that quite a bit, but this is the latest right now in this class. And, Let's start with a name that we mentioned on the last bank as potentially being a Miami commit in the near future. That is cornerback Chris Ewald, blue chip player out of Chaminade in Broward County, powerhouse program, Miami-Georgia battle. Georgia wanted him bad. He visited them last week. It was back and forth. But as we predicted in the bank, Miami came out on top with his commitment. So, you know, Pete, I think this is the type of long corner local. Again, when Georgia, which has produced – I don't know how many first round corners in the last few years, first, second round corners, national championship players. When they're after a guy this hard, I think T Rob is still the off the defensive backs coach at Georgia noted producer of first round picks, noted elite recruiter. James Coley was also in on that recruitment as well. Our old friends. And you know, he does very well uh, recruiting down here. It looked like they thought they they had him there for a second. Coach Coley was tweeting there. I was getting, I was already getting people sending me the tweet, and there was meltdowns happening. But the Canes got it done. Yeah, again, as we said last week in the bank, a lot of confidence with Chris Ewald. That would be ultimately a Miami win. Six foot, I think he's closer to six one after seeing him in person. I don't know when he's been measured recently. I know last time he got measured as a really young player, he had a six three plus wingspan, so long armed. Again, it's probably closer to six one based on my visual test. Um, with a long wingspan player, your classic long corner experience, knows how to use his length, very well-schooled, very advanced from a fundamental standpoint. I know our guy Steve-O, who's the man out there in Broward, trains with all these guys. He compared Chris Ewald to Daryl Porter from like a technique footwork standpoint, but bigger body, longer arms. So this is someone who's gone against JoJo Trader in practice, Jeremiah Smith in practice, CJ Bailey, who balled for NC State in their spring game as quarterback. He's gone against big-time dudes and held his own. Of course, also, Chaminade plays a national schedule. Not the, you know, we've talked about in the podcast wanting to get faster at corners, about like 4-4, four, 4-3, four, four, trying to get more athletic with two-way kind of multiple guys. He's not bad. He's more your pure cover corner. But I think if you get a DJ Pickett, if you get, you know, other guys, Jabari Antoine, Bryce Fitzgerald, Ben Hanks, Aiden Anding, some names in that mix. If you get th- what some of those guys that fit that gap, fit that profile, Tim Merritt, you already have on board. This is someone who's more your traditional corner that Miami's landed that has been very solid at Miami. You just want to add on top of, of, of this guy. But um, very good land, very good recruiting victory over Georgia, which just beat you out for Tyler Williams. And battle tested, man. We see him here here in Traz against Northwestern. Uh, so I mean, you're, you you understand that he's gone up against the best down here in South Florida and and held his own, which you know we wouldn't expect any otherwise from him. But the size, man. We saw him at that Under Armour Armour Camp D, and and I mean the frame is legit there. As he continues to learn, not that he doesn't know how to how to use it already, but as he really really learns how to use that length and and that physicality should be a really nice piece for this defense moving forward. Yeah. I mean, really simple profile. I mean, this guy, if you're talking about weaknesses, he doesn't play other positions. He's not a track star. And I don't think he's like the most physical guy as far as notable physicality. So those are weaknesses, strengths, size, the length, which you mentioned, the technique, the experience, he gets a lot of, you know, you'd like to think of more interceptions. Again, that's where I think the lack of two-way production comes into play. He doesn't, 
get a ton of interceptions. He gets a ton of deflections with his length. So I, in a perfect world, you can coach him up and get some of those deflections turning into INTs. But Sauce Gardner in the NFL making a living off of deflections. So Chris Ewald, somebody that, again, major school, becoming a feeder school a little bit to Miami when you talk about Zaquan Patterson, um, JoJo Trader from Chaminade coming to the Canes. Ewald, you got to win this battle. He's a former Michigan commit, former you know major Georgia target. We know what those two teams are about as far as playoffs and championships. Last two champions of college football. The last two champions of college football wanted this player right in Miami's backyard. Miami wins the battle. I think that speaks for itself. Yeah, again, I just I keep seeing Aquinas here. I keep seeing Central. So, like, you're seeing him against the best of the best. And to me, that really, really goes a long way. At this position, which is such a one-on-one competitive uh, position in that sense. No, no question about it. And I think Miami's cornerback recruiting, I know Miami's cornerback recruiting is not done. So a lot to talk about as far as that spot, which is a perfect transition into the bank. And I think overall, we're going to go through a lot of names here. We're going to go through a lot of big time names. But I think the overall theme here is that Miami's hot. Miami's in play for a lot of big time targets at important positions. Miami's going to win a lot of these battles. Some of the battles that Miami loses, they're going to stay on these guys, as you saw last year with the Justin Scotts of the world. And Miami's going to have the advantage, I think, of some success on the field with Cam Ward throwing footballs into the end zone on national TV. So this class, to me, is in a better spot than Miami was last year. And of course, we know Miami finished with the number five class in the country, and they did not have the benefit of what could be, what people are projecting. We don't know. That's why they play the games, a much improved season. So this class has all the momentum, to me, of a top five class, and we're going to go through each and every name that is in play for free on Kane's Inside for you guys. So, Pete, let's start here with a name that, as we're recording this, again, he's committing at 11 a.m. on Friday. You may be watching this, and he's already picked a school. That is Herbert Scroggins. We won't go into tremendous detail on him other than he's a major target at defensive end that Miami identified months in advance and we talked about here on the show. If he hasn't picked, I expect him to pick Miami. If he's picked Miami, check out uh, an instant reaction pod for Herbert Scroggins, which we will have recorded like we always do for these commits. And if he uh, picked another school, I think there's going to be a lot of surprise people. So that's the Herbert Scroggins story. If he has committed to the Canes while you're watching this, remember to check out our instant reaction pod right after. I think that's all we could say there uh, on terms of Herbert Scroggins. uh, In terms of other guys that I think Miami is in play for, that are our major targets. Let's start with P let's start with Hilton Stubbs here uh-huh. um, who recently decommitted from USC recently, yep. meaning last night, that was not an unexpected move. This is one of the top safeties in the country. Many people consider him the top safety in the country, top 100 player out of Jacksonville Mandarin played for raw Miami seven on seven. We talked to coach Duasso about him. He basically compared it to camp kitchens as a ball hawk, but bigger version guy fumbled recovery for touchdown picks for touchdowns, big hits six, two, did really well at Rivals Miami as well. I think he had the highest vertical leap at that combine of elite players from all over the country. So the explosiveness, the length, the ball production, the pedigree, decommitted from USC, talking to sources, I think Miami has a great, great shot to land Drake Stubbs, who would be the biggest safety recruit Miami's landed probably since James Williams. And unlike James Williams, this is a true, true safety. Yeah, I've been very impressed by him and the stuff that we've seen D and look if you can you can pair him up with the next guy that we're going to be talking about here what a what a dream class that would be at this position yeah and also Zaquan Patterson yeah. right who who might have signed last year who's rated similarly different kind of player right similar size and physicality but Stubbs probably more of your ball hawk to get your interceptions your fumble recoveries returns those kind of things Patterson's going to give you the physicality and the instincts all over the field. Although Stubbs is physical too. You see him knocking people's uh, heads in terms of what he's doing for Jacksonville, a very good program that competes for state championships. So big move with the decommitment. Miami to me is in the driver's seat at that particular position for him. Now, next up here, another defensive back five-star talent here, DJ Pickett. What's the latest with him? I think Miami's in great spot with DJ Pickett. I think he wants to be a Miami. He has tremendous family ties there. Miami has a uh, great situation for him. They want him as a corner. I think that is personally my where I think he should at least start off, and that's where I think he has the best upside. 
six, five player running 10, five people say, well, there's no corners that fit that profile. There's not a lot of human beings that fit that profile. So you're kind of making it up as you go with the DJ Pickett. Um, to me, I think length and speed play up at corner more so than safety. Safety, you, you want that at every position, but I think safety is very much about instincts. First, you look at the guys that are stars of the NFL. They're not the biggest, fastest guys corner. They're usually guys with freakish size and speed. I mean, Pat Sertan being one of them, he has great technique too, but you know, size and speed at corner is essential length, particularly and speed at corner is essential. I think you start him off there and see if he can handle that also has ability to play wide receiver, but I think he wants to be in Miami big schools, recruiting him, your LSU's your Oregon's, but he has a great relationship with Miami staff. He has a family tie booker Pickett, His cousin just arrived to play defensive end has relatives that have played at the university of Miami. Um, I expect that if Miami doesn't fumble it, have a horrible season, something goes wrong in the relationship, which I've heard nothing along that lines of those lines. I think he'll be a cane. That is what I think based on everything I know today. Next up here is IOC Epinesa as we play his clips, a guy that has been right near the top of Miami's board, obviously has the pedigree. His brother, AJ um, is in the league and, and had a great career at Iowa. Uh, but this is a guy that Miami's prioritized from the Midwest as Mario has uh, done very well in that region. Yeah, Midwest to Miami. We talked about on the podcast, Justin Scott, who I, by the way, I heard is on campus and looking like he may play a part in the rotation, looking the part already. So Justin Scott from Chicago, five-star player to Miami. Marquise Lightfoot, five-star player from Chicago to Miami. You saw him in the spring game all over the place, defensive end. Just like Yossi Epinesa. Yossi Epinesa is not from Chicago area. He's more from the St. Louis Metro, Edwardsville, Illinois. But, you know, talking to people in Miami, he's held in the same esteem as those elite players that I just mentioned. I think Miami's in a great position with him. Iowa, tremendous family ties from Epinesa to Iowa. Missouri is the local school, but Miami is in a very, very strong position with Epinesa. And uh, they'd love to close it. It's not done. But, you know, Miami is making a strong, strong push for this guy. And if they win this battle, it would be, I think, on, along the lines of Justice Scott, Marquise Lightfoot, that elite, elite, elite recruiting win if they can bring it home. Coach Joe has family ties to Epinesa, who's of Samoan descent. I've said enough about how much I want Paulie's at University of Miami. This guy personifies it. He's tough. He uh, great with his hands. You know, he's not just a guy that's, again, finesse. He has power. He can go through you. He can beat you with finesse. He excels in throwing events on track and field. He blocks kicks. He plays a little offense as well. Of course, his brother was a second-round pick in All-America at Iowa. So checks every box as a physical guy. Herbert Scrogg is more of your stand-up jack, that type of rusher. This guy's going to be on the other side of that. Kind of like how you had McConaughey and Light, uh, Lightfoot at la last year's class. Also, Booker Pickett and and. Elias Rudolph, more of those stand-up guys. Scroggins fits that role. This guy would be more of your McConaughey, just relentless, uses his hands, big, strong, fast, stud defensive end like a Ruben Bain. Miami, again, has this guy in extremely high esteem. He's a high, 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 high priority, just like DJ Pickett. Let's see if they can close the deal. I like where Miami is at this current point. They've done everything they can. Now, one that is going to be a tough battle locally, D, Ben Hanks out of Booker T., premier cornerback prospect and you know we've talked about him plenty of times on this show but florida uh is definitely going to be a tough tough battle there yeah in terms of the you know we're talking about high high pri highest priority possible kind of guys ben hanks is certainly in that category best player in south florida cornerback major need position florida legacy i think florida is putting a lot of pressure on him he visited miami had a good visit that to me is is of the guys that we're talking about. That's going to be the most uphill battle. Miami's felt good about what they've done with Ben Hanks throughout. We've told you, but you know, George Florida's making a push here. It's been reported. That's real. What I'm hoping is, you know, George is in there with him just like they were with Ewald. I hope if you lose, obviously, I hope we win this battle right now. If you lose a battle, I hope you lose it to Florida and not Georgia. Reason being is that Florida is probably going to have a horrible season. That is my expectation. I think they're going to flop. I think Napier is going to get fired. I think the whole thing's going to be a disaster. And we've seen that happen before with Florida's classes. They kind of go up for grabs. And I think somebody like this, if he commits to Florida, Miami's not going to let up at all. And uh, they'll have the chance to flip him later on. So, But of the, of the big priority type guys we're talking about, I think he's the one I'm the most concerned about in the short term. But if he commits to Florida, I, I would treat him basically like an open commit. Now, 
looking at a couple other defensive backs, one of them being local in Bryce Fitzgerald and then Aiden Anding out of the Louisiana, out of the Ruston, Louisiana area. I'll play Bryce Fitzgerald's clips here out of Columbus. Um, but he's a guy that we, we saw at the Under Armour camp tested very well out there, um, plays both sides of the ball, right? D. So let's talk about these two guys, Bryce Fitzgerald and Aiden Anding. Two major priorities that Miami would love to land is putting a lot of, you know, full full court press on as we do this. Let's start with Fitzgerald because his highlights are playing. So he's somebody that there's a narrative I've seen on the Kansasite.com message boards, 6.9 million posts and counting, most active Kansas discussion on the planet. And with him, they're talking about the athleticism. We don't want unathletic safeties anymore. He ran a bad 100-meter time. I think he ran like 11.6. I don't think he trained for the 100. I think it was really just a weird thing. There are absolutely zero athleticism concerns with Bryce Fitzgerald. He is one of the best athletes in the state, period, point blank. That's like his strength. It's just if you're watching these highlights, do you see athleticism concerns on this? So he's an incredible athlete on the field. He consistently not only gets picks, but he returns those picks. He plays offense. uh, He plays wide receiver very effectively. He was a very good basketball player for the state championship, Belen Jesuit Wolverines the finest school in South Florida. And he uh, ran a four, four on the lasers at Under Armour. So I don't see the athleticism concerns. And in fact, he's listed as a safety. I think the one concern that is legitimate with Fitzgerald is going to be his physicality. He's not much of a tackler. He doesn't like that part of the game as much. Some people speculate he might be a wide receiver. What I've heard lately is that don't sleep on Bryce Fitzgerald as a corner back he's played corner at these various camps and he looks just as smooth as anybody there's a highlight on on twitter circulating of him undercutting a route at the rivals five-star camp and just looking smooth as silk he might be best as a corner four four speed i think he's about six foot he uh obviously he's a ball hawk as you saw at safety that might be the best spot for him but i think with miami it's get this elite athlete on campus and figure out the rest later florida's in there you know lsu all the, all the major schools you'd expect, but Miami really, really wants to keep Bryce Sherald in this class. Keep him home. Agreed. I mean, look, I, I don't see Miami recruiting any Belen guys anytime soon, D. So I guess they'll have to keep with the Columbus guys. Well, listen, let me jump into uh, Aiden and Dan before I move on from Russell, Louisiana. Sim- similar to what I just said with, with Fitzgerald. Elite mm-hmm. athlete, played basketball, knew to football, and excelled right away. Um, kick, you know, kick butt on the camp circuit. Looked one of various MVP awards and just looked the part. Miami views him in the same class as these guys I'm talking about. They're like he's rated three star. I don't think his rankings caught up to what he really is perceived wise. I mean, Texas is a playoff team with all the money in the world. They're after him hard. That's who Miami is fighting. Um, but I think Miami's really they're still in the fight there with with Aiden Anding. Don't put his name to the side. Miami is battling hard. And as far as priority, he's right there with these guys. Ignore the ranking. Look at the battle. Miami, Texas, for a premier player that Miami thinks has the upside to be an NFL type player. Now, looking at the other side of the ball, the wide receiver position, the couple tough losses there, recruiting wise, a uh, couple targets that were, you know, pretty high up on Miami's board there, but feeling pretty good with Dalen Upshaw. Yeah. So, this is a position where I think we're kind of similar where we were at defensive line last year, where it was a priority. You've had some tough losses. You're not where you want to be at that position. But, of course, it ended up with the best defensive line room in the country. I think Miami's hoping for a similar outcome here. And I think that the, the trump card is going to be the fact that Cam Ward is going to be throwing touchdowns. JoJo Trader, Night Carr, Restrepo, Jacoby George, and the rest of those guys on the field. And that, I think, is going to generate a lot of momentum. But you want to get names in the boat. I think the name that is most likely to jump in the boat is somebody that Miami really, really likes out of the SEC country, Dalen Upshaw. He's one that P we put on his highlights. I didn't know much about him. And we did it like I watched him for the first time, like on the show. And I was like, how is this guy not talked about more? And you read he's kicking butt in the seven on sevens. He, he looked good physically from what I'm told when he visited as far as his body type. He looked like a strong college type receiver. You see the routes. You see the production over a thousand yards. Big time school in Alabama. Hands run after catch. He's breaking tackles and scoring touchdowns consistently. What's not to like? This is a guy I think you get in the boat. And then you keep going after the big fish. Yeah, and his highlights are playing here. And, and I mean, he was just killing the defensive backs, the route running. I think it's something 
that's very you know underrated at the position when we talk about it it's kind of like what we were talking about uh, what we talk about at the defensive line position we just look at the traits sometimes how fast are they what's the twitch like what's the get off like but at the receiver position route running is such a such an underrated i mean it's, it shouldn't be underrated i'm talking about underrated from the when the fans are looking at it and in that perspective 100 percent. it's a craft position look at the nfl the best wide receivers are not the four three guys although there's some of them but those guys also run great routes they're not the six five guys although there's some of them but those guys also run great routes it's really about route running first and craft hands catches and traffic and productivity you know the great lance roffer is one of the top posters on canesinsight.com did a huge analytic study about why certain positions excel and he looked at wide receiver and the combine data the high school combine data which i don't know what dalen upshaw's combine numbers are i'm just speaking in general that didn't necessarily translate to success for wide receiver like it did at other positions. Really what translated a receiver was production. And this guy's a guy had over a thousand yards for Phoenix city playing with another great receiver who went uh, to Auburn camp Coleman. So this is a dude who meets that checks that box has size. We liked how he looked on the visit and Miami's going to push hard to land him over sec schools, Auburn, Florida showing an interest there, Kentucky, but I think Miami's in the driver's seat and he'd be the one I expect to go into the boat. Now, there's been some losses. So last time on the bank, I mentioned some names that Miami felt pretty good about. Dalen Upshaw was one of them. Also mentioned Tyler Williams from Riverview. Now it's Sefner, Armwood in Florida, Josh Moore, West Broward in South Florida. With Williams, he obviously committed to Georgia. The Miami felt good, but Miami felt good going into the Georgia visit. I think it's a simple case of Georgia put pressure on him. They're the top program in the country right now. They gave him a good rap and he committed there. Kind of like how you know Miami put a lot of pressure on Scroggins, who was projected to go to Auburn before visiting Miami. They just that's a you know, you beat him, you beat Georgia for Ewald, you lose to Georgia for Tyler Williams. I think it is what it is. Uh they'd love to get, have Tyler Williams, but that's that's just a loss. Josh Moore going to Florida, that's been a strange recruitment, ups and downs. Miami's felt very confident at times, very, you know, not confident in others, felt confident coming off his visit, and then out of nowhere, you know, Florida State kind of brought him in for an official unofficial rumored then he goes to commits to florida it was a weird situation with more he's one might be going to recruit until the end florida i think is going to be a flimsy situation if they struggle on the field which i personally expect them to do and a lot of people do when you look at that schedule and the lack of talent on the team one guy that you felt good about for a few weeks now is gavin nix out of img at the linebacker position d still looking like uh like a good possibility that it happens Yep, I like Miami for Gavin Nix, who's a top-of-the-board target. Compared a lot to Jonathan Vilma, just in terms of size, speed, role on the team, being a leader on that IMG team filled with studs. He gets everybody in line. He's extremely productive. His highlights are great, but his game tape's even better. Top 100 player, so it's not like this is some sleeper that you're trying to build up. Florida State, Oregon, big-name schools after him. But Miami's done the best job recruiting him. Miami's identified him early on, again, as a priority target, and – They'd be over the moon to land this top 100 player to spearhead their defense, tip of the spear at that linebacker position. I like Miami for Gavin Nix. Continue to. Now, the defensive tackle recruitment has been a little bit, I don't want to say all over the place, but there's been a lot of names in the picture here. So how are things shaking out there? Yeah, a lot of crystal balls to Miami at this position, where which I think we're, you know, just nothing's been as far along as as many have thought. And even I thought it was certain guys. So that's a position I think Miami is still in flux. Miami's going to get somebody there. I think they're going to get somebody good there. And of course, they're going to continue to go after Elijah Griffin, the best in the country, especially if they get his best friend or his good friend, Herbert Scroggins, in the boat. But names there. Randy Adarica at one point was committed to, to – or uh, not committed, was projected to UM. We did an instant reaction pod recording that we didn't release on Randy Adarica. Uh, I think he's training to Penn State. You know, I'm not sure that's – that's it. he's a good player, but it's not like a devastating loss for the Canes. Floyd Bucard – from central had some medical stuff uh, trending away as well. He's not in the picture. Walter Mathis, crystal ball to Miami from S Savannah, good friend of Herbert Scroggins and Elijah Griffin. Miami's battling the SEC there. That's a possibility, but Miami's battling Jarquez Carter. We talked about a recent podcast, get a crystal ball to Miami out of Newberry, Florida. Miami's making really good progress there. And he looked awesome at the rivals camp body wise, athletically strength wise. He's somebody, I think he won the bench press competition. He's someone Miami would love to add. And I think that's probably the one that Miami has the most juice with right now. He's probably, he might be the most overall talented player, but that's not done. And Derry Norris, who Miami thought they really were going to get uh, for a while and liked Georgia Tech's made a strong move there. So that's a weird position. We'll see how the board shakes out. 
If I had to pick my best guess right now, I would say Carter probably has the most momentum, and he's probably the most complete player. We talk about the size, the athleticism, the strength, all those things, production. But we'll see. It's going to be an interesting one to watch. Defensive tackle. And then they're going to continue to recruit big fish as well. At the offensive line spot, we've seen Miami with a nice run here in the last couple of weeks, landing Max Buchanan this week uh, and then a couple others in previous weeks. Looks like they want to kind of wrap up their class with a center, and there's a couple options on the table there. Yeah, I think – Left tackle or tackles Wilkerson and Campbell, these tackle bodies, the, the the basketball players from Orlando, developmental guys, but guys with a lot of upside. I'd say Wilkerson probably further, maybe a year ahead of where Campbell is, but both of them are basketball converts with all the physical tools you want. Get them in, develop them behind very good tackles that you already have. Two years, you got some guys that can look like NFL guys. That's the plan. TK Mo out of Jacksonville. Miami loves this guy. Saw him in person. He's another guy with size and athletic ability. I think he's probably further along than the two tackles. He's someone that might contribute earlier than most. And that's Cooper comparisons all over the place with him internally. Max Buchanan at guard. Top 100 player according to on three. You know, four star on the composite from Sanford. We talked about him uh, on the instant reaction pod, which you could check out. Uh, did we do an instant reaction pod on on, on, on Buchanan? Yeah. We, yeah. So well, you get, well, we did. We, we had our... Uh, we had our show yesterday where we broke it down, so it wasn't it wasn't as instant as it normally gets, but it was less than twenty four hours later. There, yeah, so. we, we pump out so many of these things daily. Again, it's like and subscribe for the daily content plus instant reaction pods. Um, lose track, but yeah. So as we said on the on the pod of Buchanan, star player, guy Miami really wanted, plays left tackle for the team, uh, but they expect him as guard. So him and Mo at guard, Wilkerson and Campbell, developmental center. That of course leaves. Center, uh, sorry, the model tackles for the other guys. That, of course, leaves center. And the centers are the highest rated guys on the board. You're talking about CJ Alifatuli or SJ Alifatuli out of Las Vegas and Cortez Smith out of Georgia, battling Michigan and some other schools for Alifatuli, battling Cortez Smith, or sorry, battling Georgia for Cortez Smith. There's a lot of competition for these guys. These are the highest rated players on the board as far as, you know, national perception of Miami thinks these are the two top guys uh, to go after at this spot. So they think they're going to get one of them. Either one would be a tremendous option for the Canes. Cortez Smith probably bringing a little more power and physicality, just he's bigger, thicker. Uh, Alpha Tuli, more athleticism bend, those kind of things. Both, again, elite, elite options at the center position. That would, I think, complete the offensive line recruiting class. One of those two, and they'll expect to get one. We'll see who it is. A few more things here before we wrap it up. The running back, Gerard Pringle, is the lone commit at that position right now. And as of right now, you feel like that is going to be the only guy in the class at that I spot. I do. You know, Byron Lewis is still in the mix. Ja'Kai Mills, I don't see that one. Byron Lewis still in the mix, Miami, Florida State. But I, I, I do think Pringle will be the only back in the class, as we've reported for uh, about, about a month now. That just seems like the most realistic option. Miami loves what he brings. Top 10 back in the country. They saw him in person. Love what he did. Productive, 10-8 speed, tough, breaks tackles. He'll be big enough to be a you know a true back, not just a change of pace. They like what they see with, with Jerry Pringle. Still recruiting Byron Lewis, but I don't see that being a possibility. By the way, before I forget, you see the shirt. Canes wear. If you're a Florida Panthers fan, you want all the top Florida Panthers championship gear. Caneswear.com or Caneswear in Davie. Plus, they, of course, they got all the cane stuff you could possibly want for the summer, beach stuff, coolers, yetis, towels, bathing suits, you name it, caneswear.com or the store in Davie, which is heaven for a Miami sports fan. Switching gears to quarterback, Pete, we talked about this a little bit on previous pods that Miami would be bringing in major targets in 2026 on campus to throw. Tate Reynolds from Arizona, we talked about him a bunch. The basket, or the baseball commit to Arizona State, recently decommitted from there. Clemson is looking strong with him. Super athletic, super talented, big player, looks the part. Um, Michael Clayton out of Central Florida, another big quarterback with a lot of talent, uncommitted right now. Then Darren Coleman from Orlando Jones, who is a smaller quarterback, but again, the guy has been very productive, beat out um, Trevor Jackson, who went to Florida State in the middle of the season. This is a lead 11 quarterback senior. This guy beat him out as a sophomore because he's just a better player. Of course, Trevor Jackson goes to Florida State. But the better player, Darren Coleman, still at Orlando Jones, rising junior. Miami had all three of those guys at a camp. I was there for the beginning of it, so I saw part of it, and then I talked to folks and sources about the rest of it. Darren Coleman, I'm told, was the best passer of the group by far, and he's the one I expect to be the Miami's quarterback of the 2026 class. 
very small. I saw him. I mean, he's he, he's he's skinny and he's short, but the arm talent is obvious. The release is super quick. His arms are very very long and unusually big hands as well. Frame wise, I'd compare him to like a Bryce Young. Doesn't mean he's going to win the Heisman. A lot of guys are built like Bryce Young that don't win the Heisman, but I think that's a similar body type for better or worse. You see the, the bad is he's light, he's short. He does have long arms and big hands to help him overcome it. And then the arm talent is, I was told, far and away the best at that camp where there were some good arms there. So Darren Coleman's the name I expect to be Miami's quarterback of that 2026 class. Luke Nickel for this 2025 class, solid as rock. Last name here, D, before we wrap it up. Jabori Antoine, uh, former LSU commit, recently decommitted, kind of like how Drake, Drake Stubbs just decommitted from USC and Miami's been lurking there. But the SEC is still going to be coming after him hard. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a battle to the end. Miami's in a good spot, as we said right now, and they've been recruiting him hard. They're going to continue recruiting him even harder. Of course, decommitting from LSU is a big step. Miami's in a good spot right now. I think this is going to be one of those things where he, he plays out over the course of the season. Hopefully LSU has a rough, a, a, takes a step back. That'll help because tremendous local pressure to go to Louisiana, but the kid decommitted. So I think that tells you where his heart is. Miami has a great shot there. Florida State also in the mix, but Miami is in a very, very good position with Jabari Antoine. But any Louisiana kid of this caliber, number two player in Louisiana, that's always going to be a battle till the end. A couple other names I want to mention that I didn't write up in the bank, but I want to talk about on the show. Romanus Frederic out of St. Thomas Aquinas, signee last year, signed without much hype. Canes this side was the first to identify him as a target, ends up committing to the Canes, signing with the Canes as a three-star corner, also played receiver and returned kicks for Aquinas, which is unusual to have two great guys there that do had play all those roles at a school like Aquinas. He did that. I'm told that he and workouts looks absolutely unreal. NFL talent. I saw him in person. He's bigger than I thought, stronger than I thought. He's definitely six foot plus. But I'm told just movement-wise, competitive-wise, just the cornerback movement stuff, he looks like an NFL player. They're blown away. He's one where they thought he'd be good, better than they thought based on the initial evaluation. Of course, they still got to play football and put on pads. Ryan Max, another one that they thought he was here, and they saw a senior year in his camps. And they put him here, and now they see him in person. He continues to rise in esteem. Again, someone I saw in person just – Counselor at the camp didn't see him working out, but he's bigger than I thought. He's not like the Corey Couch size or anything like that. He's average size corner, which is better than undersized corner when you combine the athletic ability. I think he ran 10 9. Um, you know, the, just the great instincts as a second generation player, father Rod Mack for the Canes. So, well coached dude. That St. Thomas cornerback duel will be highly scrutinized because that's a position that Miami struggled to recruit. Neither of those two guys was a huge name recruit. If they can turn into productive players, that will be a major step forward for Miami as they continue to add premier corners like we've been talking about on the show. And remember, Canes fans, if you want to see this all in written form, you can go to the canesinsight.com website and join the discussion on the forums, the largest community there is. And again, completely free, canesinsight.com. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are not doing so already. D, anything else? No, man, I'm excited. I'm juiced. I'm running out of breath. I keep taking deep breaths here because I'm talking so much, but I'm just juiced up, man. I'm excited about the Canes. I'm excited about the momentum. I think some big names in play. I think you get a lot of these in the boat now. You got some good evals in the boat. You're Cole McConaughey's of the world. You're Roman, Romanus Frederic that you feel good about from an eval standpoint. On top of the blue chippers that you get in the boat, have some success on the field, land the cherries on top. Talking about top top five, top three class. I think it's in play. Miami keeps doing what they're doing, keeps getting their commitments like they're getting right now, and then finishes strong with on-field performance, which, of course, that's going to be the topic for the rest of the summer and into the year. So we want to hear it daily. Canesinsight.com. They're going to give you the quickest reactions for anything, 6.9 million posts and counting. And, of course, we're hitting you daily. Like and subscribe, audio or video. Appreciate you. Go Canes. Go Canes. Yeah, this an insight to the Canes And you know we ain't playing no games Joaquin said dominate, so that's what we do Home of the legends and seventh floor crew Down in Miami where hurricanes brew You here for the rumors, we bring you the news Cause it's all about the you And nobody do it like Canes in sight Nobody do it like Canes in sight Nobody do it like Canes in sight